Hey, how's it going? My name is Gabby. Welcome back to my channel. And today, I thought it would be kind of fun to do a video where I let you know about authors that I've read that I've only enjoyed one book from them. So the rules that I've set for myself for this video is that these are all authors that I've read at least three of their books, but I've only enjoyed one of their books so far. I feel like a lot of times I'll read a book from an author and I'll either love it, like the first book I read from them is a new favorite of mine, and then I will continue to read every single release they come out with and then just nothing will live up to that first release. Or it's a situation where I'll read an author's first book and think like, meh, it was fine, but I kind of like their writing and I like, you know, their ideas, and then I'll read another book from them and find a favorite. And these are all authors that like, I do have a favorite book from them, but I've only really enjoyed and loved one book from them. <laughs> and you know, with some authors, like some of these authors on this list, it's like I have one favorite and then I really have not liked anything else that they've come out with. And then with some of these other authors, it's like I've loved one book and then everything else was just like fine, you know, like a three star, like nothing special. But yeah, I thought this would make for an interesting video, interesting conversation, see if anybody else feels the same. So the first author, we're starting off with a controversial pick, kind of, are we? I don't know, because it's Casey McQuiston. <laughs> and this author, you know, published Red, White, and Royal Blue which is one of my favorite romance books that I've ever read in my freaking life. And this is the only book that I've enjoyed from this author, sadly. This was kind of the author that inspired me to do this video in the first place because I was always like thinking, is this author a one-hit wonder with Red, White, and Royal Blue? You know, like what happened? Because, you know, Red, White, and Royal Blue, it's this amazing male-male romance. We have this dude who is the first son of the female president of the United States, and then he falls for a prince. And it's beautiful, it's kind of forbidden, it's just so good, one of my faves. But then I read uh, the book that they came out with last year, I think, One Last Stop, which was a female-female romance, and I thought this one was fine. You know, it was like nothing special for me. It just didn't really do much for me. And then this year, I read their newest book, I Kissed Shara Wheeler, which was a young adult romance, and this was a DNF for me. So I'm starting to feel like, I don't know if this author is just maybe a one-hit wonder with Red, White, and Royal Blue, but at the same time, I'm always willing to read their newest stuff because I'm hoping that the next one will be a winner just like this one is for me. So yeah, that's how I'm feeling. Let me know how you feel about this author. The next one is another controversial one because this is a very well-loved author and I'm sorry, but it's Mariana Zapata. Okay, the only book that I've loved from Mariana Zapata is the first book that I ever read by her, which was The Wall of Winnipeg and Me. This book, oh my god, it's everything. If you're a fan of slow burn romance, like I'm talking slow burn, then I would highly recommend this book. And like Mariana Zapata is kind of known for having these like slow burn romances, you know, but I feel like The Wall of Winnipeg and Me is just god tier, chef's kiss, love everything about it. But sadly, it's like the only book from this author that I've truly loved. And to be fair, I've only read four books total from this author. I've read The Wall of Winnipeg and Me, which was my favorite. And then I also read From Lukov with Love, which I thought was fine. It was like a 3.5 for me. And then I read Dear Aaron and Colty, which were both two star books for me. Oh my god, I know, don't come for my throat. But I just did not enjoy those books. Like, I really didn't. Also, Mariana Zapata is another author where I would be willing to give her books more chances just because of how much I love The Wall of Winnipeg and Me. It still stands out to this day in my memory like how much I loved it and it's been a few years since I've read this one and The Wall of Winnipeg and Me is one that I would love to reread at some point just because I loved it so freaking much. But yeah, Mariana Zapata, it's upsetting because I know she's such a popular romance author and I want to love her books as much as everyone else seems to. So if you have any other book recs from this author that you think I would like based on how much I liked Wall of Winnipeg me, I would love to know because at this point I'm just feeling lost and like I don't know where to go from here. The next author on this list is going to be our first thriller author on this list because it's Katherine Ryan Howard. I have read three books from this author so far. I've read 56 Days, Rewind, and The Nothing Man, and sadly the only one that I've really enjoyed from this author is The Nothing Man, which of course sadly is the one that I do not own. <laughs> but because I loved The Nothing Man so much, I decided to make 56 Days a book troop pick last year, and unfortunately, this one was just very mediocre at best for me. I feel like this was one of those thrillers where it tries to involve COVID in like a really interesting way and I was excited at the idea of it but like the execution just wasn't my favorite and there was nothing really surprising going on towards the end of this book. Like I don't know, it was just kind of a letdown. And then the other book that I've read from them, Rewind, it sounded like it would be really cool like Bates Motel kind of creepiness and it ended up just being fine. You know, it was like a two or three star book for me, nothing special but Nothing Man. 
that was the first book that I read from this author and it was so freaking good. And Nothing Man is cool because we get like kind of two stories happening side by side in this book because we get the point of view of this serial killer who's called the Nothing Man. We get his perspective. And then we also get the point of view of this girl who's writing a story called the Nothing Man about her experiences with him because she was the only survivor when he came and like murdered her whole family. And it's just like a really, really interesting story. And I feel like I'm still interested in reading books by this author because of how much I love the Nothing Man. I know this author has another thriller coming out this summer, I think, called Runtime. And it looks like it has something to do with movies. So like, I'm kind of curious about it. I think I'm going to see how, like how the ratings are with like my friends, like what they're rating it, if they're liking it first before I read it. But I'm still curious about this author's books, you know, like I'll still probably check them out. The next author on this list is going to be another thriller author and it's actually an author duo because it's Greer Hendricks and Sarah Pekinen because oh my goodness, this author, I have such a roller coaster of emotions with this author because the only book that I've enjoyed, I've read four books from this author, the only one I've enjoyed is An Anonymous Girl, which was their second book. I actually read The Wife Between Us, which was their first published book, and I gave this one star. Like, it was in my least favorite books of 2017, and if you're asking why I still own this book, that's a damn good question because I am not totally sure. <laughs> this book, An Anonymous Girl, was their second published book, and this was a five star for me. Like, I absolutely loved this. And since these two books, you know, they've published uh, You Are Not Alone, which was a two-star book for me, and then their most recent one, The Golden Couple, was actually a DNF for me. Like, I just didn't even care to finish it. And so now with this author, I honestly don't know if I'm gonna be picking up any of their future stuff, because as much as I enjoyed An Anonymous Girl, I feel like with me only enjoying one out of the four, like, that's a 25% chance that I would enjoy it again. Like, I don't know. So, like, unless they have a book that's coming out in the future that has a description that just really speaks to me, you know, because sometimes a lot of times I'll just pick up thrillers just because, you know, it's an author that I've read before or something like that, even though I'm not that intrigued by the premise. But the, I feel like the only way that I will read this author again in the future is if they have a book that sounds absolutely incredible and like exactly like something that I would enjoy because otherwise, like, I don't know, I'm just not trusting it anymore. I've lost my trust. The next one might be a surprise because it's another really popular thriller author, but if you know my reading taste, then it's probably not that big of a surprise because it's Ruth Ware. And so Ruth Ware is another one of those authors where I've only loved one book. The Turn of the Key is my favorite Ruth Ware. And I can't even tell you how many Ruth Ware books that I've read. I'm pretty sure I've read every single book that she has published except for The Lying Game, which I think was her very first book that she's ever published. But this is probably the author on this list that I've read the most books from. And I am shook that I've still only really enjoyed one book. I mean, to be fair, The Death of Mrs. Westaway, this is probably like my closest runner up to something that I have enjoyed by this author. But even this was like, it was still like a three, maybe like a 3.5 star for me. So I don't know what it is with Ruth Ware. Like nothing, nothing will live up to the turn of the key for me. Like this book is absolutely God tier. I will continue to pick up Ruth Ware books just because of how much I love this one. Like this is literally in my top five, probably favorite thrillers ever. And I am just shook that I haven't enjoyed another book from this author. I mean, I know Ruth Ware recently came out with one by one, like last year or the year before. And that was a one star for me. Like I absolutely hated it. And so I'm just kind of nervous. You know, I know Ruth Ware does have another book coming out this summer called The It Girl. And you know, like I said, I'm probably gonna read it because I'm always willing to give Ruth Ware books a second chance because of how much I love The Turn of the Key. Like The Turn of the Key is just so freaking good. And I do like her writing style, you know, like her thrillers are really accessible, you know, they're very easy to get into and they usually do involve some kind of like spooky elements, which I really like, at least in this one, it definitely does. I feel like with Ruth Ware, it is just very hit or miss for me. And so far it's been a lot more misses than hits. The next author is going to be Simone St. James, which I know is probably another controversial pick because a lot of people really love this author. But this book, The Broken Girls, is the first book that I read from Simone St. James. And to this day, it's still the only one that I've loved. This author came out with The Sundown Motel shortly after this one, and that was about like a three star for me. But then her most recent release, The Book of Cold Cases, ended up being like a two star for me, and I really didn't enjoy it. And I feel so sad about it because I want to love Simone St. James like so 
badly because of how much I enjoyed this one. I've seen a lot of people compare this author to Jennifer McMahon, which I totally can see that, you know, because they do have similar writing styles where there's something happening in the past, usually like in like the 50s, 60s, or 70s, and then we have a present day timeline and the way that they're kind of connecting and like there's something spooky happening in both timelines usually, and I like that her thrillers involve some kind of like spooky paranormal aspects. Like, you know, these books sound like they should be right up my alley, like I should absolutely love all of them. But I feel like the thing that Jennifer McMahon does better than this writer is that she's able to connect the bo both of the timelines in a really interesting way without it getting very repetitive. Because I feel like with Simone St. James, the issue that I have with her writing the most is that it feels so repetitive, you know, because usually in her books, and this is true for all three of these books, is that you know, there will be something happening in the past. And then as it's happening in the past, we're finding out about it in the present chapter, in like the next chapter. And so the chapters feel like repetitive because you're learning about things in the present day chapters that you already just learned about from the past chapters. And it's just repetitive and it drives me crazy. But The Broken Girls was one that really worked for me. Like I just really enjoyed this book. It was very atmospheric, very spooky. And at least with this one, the repetitive nature of the writing just didn't bother me as much. Maybe I didn't notice it as much because it was the first book that I read from this author, but I do feel like her writing style is very similar in all three of these books. So yeah, I don't know. Like I, I still do think that I'll check out more Simone St. James books in the future, but I just know that for most of the time it ends up being more disappointing than enjoyable for me. Oof, this next author is one that makes me sad because I want to love everything that I read by this author and that is Paul Tremblay. I know that a lot of people don't really like The Cabin at the End of the World, but this is one of my top favorite books that I've ever read in my freaking life. And it's the only book that I've really enjoyed from Paul Tremblay. I have read three of his books. I've read this one and then I read A Head Full of Ghosts last October and I read Survivor Song, which like, okay, Survivor Song, one of my least favorite books that I've ever read. I was freaking pissed and bored and just like, ugh. And then A Head Full of Ghosts, it definitely had potential, but for the most part, it's just not very memorable for me and it was kind of boring while I was reading it and it was like a solid like three-ish stars if I'm remembering right, but nothing has even come close to how much I love The Cabin at the End of the World and that makes me sad, you know? I feel like Paul Tremblay is an author that I want to try again and again because I do, like there's something with his writing style, I really enjoy it. And I know that there's potential, you know, with every book that I read from him that it can't can be great, that it can be just like this one. You know, it just hasn't happened yet and I'm sad. Like he has a few other books that are currently out right now that I might be interested in reading. Like he, he I know he has that one short story collection that's like growing things or something like that. And that one I might be interested in reading, but now I'm just kind of nervous because I've had such negative experiences with his books for the most part. But I don't know. I mean, like I said, Paul Tremblay is still an author that I would definitely probably still be reading in the future. Unlike this next author who I don't think I'll be reading any more books from, and that is Josie Silver, sadly. Because Josie Silver is another author that I've read three of her books at this point, and One Day in December is the only one that I've really enjoyed. You know, at the time that I read this book, I did consider it a favorite, but I'm always questioning now that I've read a few more of her books if I would still enjoy this one on a reread. I'm not totally sure. Because this one kind of involves this like love triangle situation between these two girls that are best friends and this guy. And I really loved this one when I read it back in the day, but again, like I'm just not sure if, it, if I would enjoy it as much if I read it now because since reading this one, I tried to read The Two Lives of Lydia Bird and that one was actually a DNF for me. I just did not care. And then this year, I read read One Night on the Island, which was one of my most anticipated releases because it sounded like everything that I would enjoy and it was just so boring and just like didn't do anything for me. And so I'm kind of sad because I feel like with this author, um, you know, after not liking The Two Lives of Lydia Bird, I was like, okay, maybe I'll read her again in the future, maybe I won't. But then with me not enjoying this new release that sounds exactly like the kind of book I would love, now I'm kind of like, okay, maybe it's just this author's writing is not for me, you know? So this is an author that I'm not totally sure if I'm gonna be reading any more of Josie Silver's books in the future, just because I'm starting to feel like her writing just might not be for me. Or at least maybe it's, you know, the fact that my reading taste has changed 
changed quite a bit in these last few years and maybe these are books that I might have enjoyed like you know five years ago but now they're just not something I'm interested in reading. All right the next one is going to be Lisa K. Adams which is another romance author that I just want to love so badly because I love the Bromance Book Club. Okay the Bromance Book Club is one of my top tier favorite romances that I've ever read. Like I absolutely adore it and because of how much I adore this book I have continued to pick up book after book by this author and I've read four of her books now. All of the books that I've read take place in this universe of like this bromance book club and it sucks you know because I want to love this whole book series so badly because I love the concept of it you know I just think it's really wholesome and really adorable and I love this group of friends and you know Gavin in this book as a love interest like he is just absolutely precious and I adore him. But then every other book in this series that I've read I've read you know three other books after this one and they've all just been fine for me. I'm pretty sure they've all been like three stars or less like none of the other books are very memorable and I'm just kind of tired to be honest of this like bromance book club trend in these books like I just want a new thing you know like I feel like if Lisa K Adams wrote like a new romance that was separate from the bromance book club then I would probably still want to check it out just to see but I feel like she's really milking this like bromance book club series you know I'm like oh my gosh I even saw this winter that she has one coming out for Christmas called like a very merry bromance or something like that and I'm like really like after four books there's gonna be another one I just think it's like enough you know like it's time to move on it was a cute concept but it's kind of it's just stayed too long like it's extended its stay and we're just ready for the next thing you know this one is kind of another one that makes me sad because it's Caroline Kepnes who wrote the book you which is one of my favorite books of all time and it makes me sad that this is on this list of I've only enjoyed one book from this author because ugh, I've read four books from Caroline Kepnes. Okay, there's You and then there's the two other books in this series, which is Hidden Bodies and You Love Me. And then I also read Providence is what it's called, right? Providence? Yeah, it is called Providence. I was right. And Providence is one of my least favorite books that I've ever read. Like, oh my gosh, what the heck even is this book? I'm just mad because Providence was such an anticipated release for me because it sounded so freaking cool. And then it was like one of the biggest disappointments ever. Like, I don't even understand. Like, to this day, I'm like, what even was Providence? But anyways, it's sad too because with this you, you know, series that this author has, like, I love reading about Joe Goldberg, okay? Like, this book, You, is one of my all-time favorites. I read this back in 2015 and since then I have reread this book like I love this book it's one of my favorite thrillers and it's so creepy and like Joe Goldberg is just like the perfect kind of like stalker character that just gets under your skin and I love the way that this book is written in like this second person that just makes you feel like you're being watched by Joe Goldberg it's just so good you know it's so freaking good then sadly even the other two books in this series they just could not live up to how great this book was for me which is so weird you know because I do love the tv show on Netflix like I love the TV show and I actually think the TV show is doing a much better job with like the later seasons because I actually didn't really like the first season of the TV show you very much and then the two later seasons like seasons two and three that are based off the second and third books are much better in my opinion like I really like the second and third season of the show but then with the books I very much only prefer the first book and then the second and third books I just thought were fine like they just don't really do it for me anymore and I'm sad because I love this book so freaking much and I think maybe I just put way too high of expectations on those other books because of how much I loved this one. Yeah, I don't know. I'm curious to know like if you are a huge fan of this first book, you, do you enjoy the other books in the series or do you also feel like they just don't really live up to this one? Because I just need to know if I'm alone in this feeling. And then the next author that I wanted to mention is the second to last author on this list and that is Taryn Fisher. And this is specifically with thrillers that I'm talking about with Taryn Fisher because if you didn't know, um, Taryn Fisher actually has published quite a bit of romance in the past and to be honest, I really do enjoy some of her romance books, um, but this is specifically talking about thrillers that she's published. Bad Mommy, if you didn't know, is a thriller that she published quite some time ago. Like this one came out, I mean, I read this one in 2018 and I'm thinking that this one was published in either 2016, maybe 2017. But this was kind of like an independently published thriller that she had. This was before she was getting picked up by like the major publishers. And this was one of my favorite thrillers that I ever read. It was actually major like Joe Goldberg vibes with this character. Um, in this book, we're following this woman named Fig who she buys this house next door to this couple and she's convinced that their child is her daughter. 
and it's like really creepy because she literally only buys the house next door with the intention of getting close to this little girl and like becoming a part of their lives. So it does feel very, you know, like kind of like stalker-like and a little bit creepy. And I just really enjoyed this one. Like I thought this was such a freaking great thriller and I still think about it to this day. And so, you know, after Taryn Fisher started getting more mainstream published books like The Wives, The Wrong Family, and then most recently An Honest Lie, I was like really excited to check out her other, you know, stuff because I'm like, okay, Bad Mommy was so freaking good. And I feel like a lot of times we're seeing a lot more romance authors starting to publish more, you know, like thriller type of books like Colleen Hoover, for example. And so I was so excited, you know, I was hoping that The Wives would be amazing. And I just thought it was like, I didn't hate The Wives as much as everyone else did. I think I gave it like a three star, but then The Wrong Family, oh my God. I picked The Wrong Family as a book troop pick last year and it was a one star, like I absolutely hated it. And then most recently, An Honest Lie, like I absolutely hated this too. And so to be honest, like I don't really think I'm gonna be reading any more thrillers from Taryn Fisher in the future, which makes me sad to say because you know, she had a really great thriller at one point. Like, I don't know what happened. I don't know if it's because she's gone more like with mainstream publishing instead of indie publishing. Like, I don't know what changed or if they're like, you know, having her alter her writing in any kind of way to appeal to more mainstream audiences. Like, I don't know what, what's going on, but I feel like uh, her stuff before she was published mainstream was so good. All right, and then the last author that I have on this list is Abby Jimenez, which this is another romance author that I have read four books from this author. I've read The Friend Zone, I've read The Happily Ever After playlist, and Life's Too Short last year, and then this year I read Part of Your World, and this author, I'm so glad that I still read Part of Your World because with this author, I've always been like, I mean, her books are fine, but like for the most part, I just always get disappointed by something in them, and so reading Part of Your World was kind of like a one last chance kind of situation where I was like, okay, I really don't think this author's for me, but because it was a book of the month, pick and because I had the book I was like whatever I'll just give it a try and I'm so glad that I did because um part of your world has been one of my most recent like favorite romances I absolutely love this book and I don't know if it's because it's kind of different from the other three books that this author wrote you know because I was looking on Goodreads and the first three books that this author wrote were all part of like a romance series and then this is the first like standalone book that she's written that's not part of the series so I'm thinking like maybe this is just like that amazing amazing thing that I've been waiting for because with this author I've always liked her writing you know like her writing has always been good it's just there's something about her books that really just irks me usually like with the friend zone and even like the happily ever after playlist like it just makes me so mad the way this author ends her books it just makes them like feel like unrealistic fairy tale once upon a time bullshit and it it's just frustrating, you know, because I feel like in some ways it can give people false hope for like really negative life circumstances and with this book, like this book keeps it fucking real, okay? Like this book was dark, it was gritty, there were trigger warnings for like abuse, like whether that's like emotional or physical abuse, like there's a lot of really real things happening in this book and then at the same time there's this really emotional but like also forbidden romance happening between these two characters because she's 10 years older than him and she's an ER doctor and he's just this country boy and her family doesn't understand and it's just like there's so much more happening in this book that I feel like it just makes it all feel more real and I just loved it so freaking much and so I highly recommend if you're planning to read this author I highly recommend this book the other three not so much at least in my opinion like I just wasn't a huge fan of the other three books but because of how much I love this book now I feel like I am interested in reading more books from Abby Jimenez in the future just because those first three books were a part of a series so I'm like okay maybe it was just a series and that particular book series that I was not in enjoying and maybe now if she's doing more standalone work like this I could definitely see myself enjoying it so at least there's that you know we're ending on a positive note but anyways um thank you so much for watching I would love to know if you have any authors that you've read you know three or maybe more books from that you've only enjoyed one of their books but because of how much you enjoyed that one book you're always willing to like read more of their books I would also love to know if you would like to see kind of like a reverse style video like this or if you have any other video ideas that I could do for something like this like would you like to see kind of like the reverse idea of this where I've read three or more books from an author and I've enjoyed like most of them. I'm trying to think of like other ways I could do a video like this kind of style. So if you have any ideas, then let me know. Yeah, thank you so much for watching as always and I will see you very soon with another video. Bye.